Good afternoon. We're here in the apiary and uh, we're gonna do an inspection on these uh, colonies that we installed. These are the packages we installed about a week ago. Um, this is what you typically would do if you uh, are a new beekeeper or you do install a package and you want to take a look at the progress of your colony. Um, we've come back since we've installed it and removed the queen cage and we'll show you that um, to see if she was uh, released from the queen cage. We're going to look for a queen. We're going to see how many how much volume of bees we still have in here. Uh, we're going to see the activity. Uh, if there's pollen being brought in, if there's nectar being brought in, if she's laying eggs. Uh, those are the things we're going to look for to make sure we got our colony moving forward. Um, and we'll take a look and see what we have. So um, if you remember when we put these together and we installed them in a prior video, <clears throat> we used this top box super for um, just a, a cover for the actual can that we put in here. And the can is, is, was just the feed that was in the package um, that you see here. And, it, and if you lift it up, it still has a little bit of weight to it, so which means it still has some uh, sugar syrup in it. However, I'm going to replace that sugar syrup with a jar of my own uh, mix because this may be stale after about a week or two. Uh, you don't want it to get mold or mildew in there and then be feeding on that. And then they have other issues like nozema and stuff. So um, we're going to go ahead and pull this out. Uh, this is the queen cage that we had uh, pulled out as well. Um, there's a, uh, a dead worker bee in there, but um, it's empty. Uh, it was, remember, it was inside the colony and uh, set on top of the frames with the screen facing down. So um, we made sure that she was released out of there. And if you take a look in this, this actual queen cage right here, there's no bees in it. There's a dead bee in there from before, but they actually ate the, the candy that was in the end of this. And then they released the queen on their own time. That, that, that took about three to five days from the time we put it in there for them to release the queen, which is the right amount of time. If your queen is not released after, you know, five days or so, um, usually you can go in and you can, um, you can actually release her. Um, most of her pheromones have, you know, proliferated through the colony that's in here, the bees that are in here. So we're going to lift this off here. We see there's still a lot of activity around those, that feeder, which means they're still taking some feed, which is okay. We'll set that to the side. I see a lot of bees gathered and clustered around the top up here. Um, this is just a flipped upside down winter inner cover and we're gonna remove that today after we put this on. Well, we'll leave this on because we're still gonna put the other feed in, um, but we're gonna probably flip it so it doesn't have too much space at the top and it gives them a top entrance as well. Looking on the inside, you can see they've kind of clustered in a ball, probably keeping the brood warm. I'm just shaking most of the bees off so they don't fall on the ground. Okay, so as you can see, I don't know if this is uh, well enough to see on the camera, but we've got 10 frames in here. When we placed in there, a lot of it was drawn cone. I think I might've put two frames of foundation if I recall. And the first observation you look for is that you have a good cluster of bees or a good amount of bees within your colony. Naturally, they should be working all the frames, but within a new package, they tend to focus on one or two frames, particularly the frames the queen may be laying on. They wanna keep the brood at a constant temperature. They wanna keep feeding the brood. Um, and so that they have that kind of job. Uh, as they start to build the brood's nest out, and my guess is that with the cluster of bees here, the brood nest is probably on these two middle frames. As they start to build that, that nest out bigger, it's more like a ball, think of a ball expanding. They start to fill out the exterior frames and edges with uh, pollen and nectar and capped honey. Um, so what I see here, a lot of activity with the bees, that's a great sign. I don't see a lot of dead bees sitting around on top of the frames. That doesn't look like there's any pests or anything that I need to be concerned about. So those are all good signs. Let's go ahead and remove this end frame that's not being used so that we can start to shift some of these frames over without disturbing them too much. Um, 
You see that's a piece of drawn comb that we put in there. We'll set that to the side. And I'm gonna lift these out and look at them. Just There's some uh, comb that they're just cleaning up as if some foundation with some, some small amount of drawn comb on it from prior colony. And we've got a colony, same thing here. Again, empty frame of comb. Uh, you know, one good thing about drawn comb is it takes a lot of resources for them to draw out the comb. On day 12, they, em they emit, the, um, they start to extrude or create uh, flakes of, of wax out of their abdomen. Um, and then the other bees will chew that wax off another bee's abdomen, chew it up, and use it like a small building paste to build out the structure of the honeycomb. They don't need a plastic frame to guide them in the shape of a honeycomb. They just build it out in the honeycomb because it is the most uh, efficient structure in nature. That's why bees build honeycomb because you know, if you had imagine you had a bunch of circles and you put those circles together, there'd be gaps between the circles and be sort of a waste of space. So the honeycomb affords for that to have perfect connectivity. And if you look at a piece of honeycomb, you can see there are no gaps between the circles. Okay, so that's why they draw out honeycomb. Um, in a, at least in a hexagonal shape. When you're working a beehive, you notice that I'm not wearing a veil. You know, as a new beekeeper, it probably recommends that you wear a veil. Um, I work with a lot of bees, as you can see. This is two yards, about 40 colonies. And, um, you know, when you work with a lot of bees, you tend to understand your bees and get comfortable with your bees. You know, the time of day to go work them, you know, the factors that would make them irritated. You just observe your bees. Um, it doesn't make me a, a stronger person because I don't have to wear a veil or I don't wear a veil. I absolutely do wear a veil. I don't want to get stung. It does hurt. But the point I'm making is that if you understand your bees and when you work with your bees, um, you work in a very deliberate, slow manner. Okay? So I know when I take my hand and I run it across the top of these bees, they're not jumping up at me. That means they're not in a defensive posture. They're not really defending anything to the manner in which to be very aggressive. If I open this hive up and they came up and flew right up to my face, or if I rubbed my hand across it and they were jumping right at my hand, then yes, they're very aggressive. You want to smoke them. You want to put your veil on. You want to make sure you calm them down uh, because something is irritating them to make them concerned about you being there. But these bees are very docile. There's no issues. So I'm going to continue to work them as I see fit and then, you know, go from there. Um, you know, one of the things I talk about with a lot of people that are new beekeepers is what do I look for in my colony to know that they're doing all right? Well, I talked about in the beginning the list of things we're looking for, right? So that's one of the things that we're doing. But as I progress across, I think one of the biggest factors that most people don't think about in a bee colony is what I call bee volume. And bee volume is the most important. If you look at that frame, this on this side of the frame would be non-ideal bee volume. Just because you have a bunch of bees on a frame does not mean you have a solid colony. You flip it over and you see there's more than 50% of this frame covered. 50% coverage is what you want on all sides of frames. You don't necessarily need to give your bees a ton of space. Bees need the space that they need as they grow. I observed this colony and the cluster of bees on two to three frames and now that I've took the cover off they've kind of moved down into probably half the colony. Half the colony has very little bees on it. Half the colony has a lot of bees on it and we'll check those frames as well for what we're looking for. But bee volume is the key message here. Don't just because you bought a new kit that you've painted up to look perfect because you're a backyard beekeeper and you're just getting into bees, you got your first package of bees, you think, you know what, I'm gonna put every box on there so that they grow. It's not like a reptile where if you put them in a bigger tank, they get bigger. Bees uh, build on the area that they need. Too much space could force them to abscond uh, in some instances, abscond meaning leave the hive. Uh, it also could leave them susceptible to pests coming in, small hive beetles, wax moths, and others, right? You don't wanna have, that. bees are very cleanly. Uh, so they go through and they and they actually clean the hive. That's exactly what's happening right now is they are cleaning the hive They're maintaining the hive. They all have a job from the day they're born to the day they die They all have a job the ones that are flying out and collecting honey 
and, and or nectar for honey. That's their job. That's the tail end of their life cycle in about 45 days. And uh, those bees actually have, um, you know, a job to do. The same with the bees that are on the frames. And that's really keep the, the, the hive cool, keep the brood maintained, go out and forage for, uh, for such. I've also noticed that this time of year is early spring. And one of the things you want to look for in a strong colony is that there are drones. So if I showed you a bee flying around, those are all what I would call your worker bees. And about 90% or more of the colony are worker bees. But 10% or thereabout are drone bees. And I just saw a drone walking around. And those are the boy bees. And without getting into too much of a demonstration or lecture, this is what a drone bee looks like. Um, again, 10% of the hive are the drone bees. They don't reside in the hive for very long after October or late winter because they're a drain on the resources. But if you see this bee in your colony, it's not a bumblebee. It's not a weird, genetically crazy bee. It is a drone bee. It's a boy bee. The, bo the only job that they have is to permit to, to do two things, really, to proliferate the the actual genetics of the colony. So it is an unfertilized eggs that creates this bee. And this bee keeps, um, you know, goes out once it's, it emerges and flies to what we call a drone congregation area. And any virgin queens that need to be mated will fly to that area, be attracted to that area. And, and that's where they would mate with the bees. Once the drone bee mates with the queen, it will die. Um, it also emits, there are studies that says that they emit a pheromone that keeps the colony in check or intact. And what I mean by that is that they actually um, emit some another pheromone. There's lots of pheromones. The queen emits a pheromone. The workers as a colony commit, emit, emit pheromones. And there's studies that say that the drone bees emit pheromones that help to signal to the colony that we're a strong, thriving colony. And that we have good you know, genetic proliferation in the future. So that's really what they're for. Um, they do consume a lot of honey. Um, so in late October, like I said, they are kicked out of the hive and basically killed until they're re, uh, reborn again in the um, in the spring. But the drone bees do not have stingers also, so they can't sting you. Um, so they can't really defend your hive either. So that's one thing that you see. Okay. Let's continue to move across the colony. That frame that I pulled out just had a lot of resources in it. There's pollen in here and there's nectar. It's not honey yet. If you look at this frame, you see the frame? It's not honey because it's not capped yet. All the shiny is nectar that's being put in there and it's being fanned and maintained until it's prepared and full. And then they'll cap it off. And that's when it's at the right moisture level to be considered honey. The little low areas that are the, the areas you see here, that's pollen. So this is a good resource frame. It's fairly heavy. It has a lot of resources in it for the bees. Let's move our way across to this next frame. And as I observe this one, this one looks like it has, again, a lot of resources in that frame. Lots of resources in this frame as well. I'm not spotting the queen yet. It's another good resource frame. Okay so, okay, so what I see here is the queen, and I'll bring this closer so you can see it. I won't point her out and see if you can spot her before I spot her, right? Lots of bees on that frame, but if you notice right here in the middle, there's a, a girl, the, the bee that has a larger abdomen, that's your queen bee. And if I look closely in this frame, which you may not be able to see, probably will not, you will see small eggs in each of the cells, which means that she is laying. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Glancing at the uh, other side of the frame, they're drawing out some comb, okay? So this is my center of my brood's nest. She just seemed to be starting laying because I didn't see eggs on the other frame. So there's that frame and I'm gonna put her back in the middle to try not to disturb her or lose her because you don't want her to fly off. Queens don't leave the hive, but to uh, swarm, once they're mated, 
They have no reason to leave the hive. They, all the other bees will take care of them. Okay, so this frame, lots of resources, no eggs. Lots of resources, no eggs. Okay. So you saw the bee that was coming up by my ear and just kind of flying around. The reaction of most people is to swat at a bee. If you notice how still I stood, I just stood real still, let the bee check me out. It's probably attracted to the perspiration or sweat on your brow, it has salt in it. They like that, salt water. That's why they're attracted to salt pools and chlorine pools. But you don't swat at a bee. If you swat at a bee, then it emits a pheromone of a defense pheromone. Lots of resources on that hive as well. Or that frame. Okay, so this is a good picture of the difference between nectar. If you see on the, the right the left side over here, this right here is nectar. And that is honey. Honey has been cured, fanned to its proper moisture temperature, and capped over with wax. That is nectar. There's a few pieces of pollen throughout here. There's a few pieces of pollen up top here. But for the most part, that's all nectar puts a little honey at the top. Last frame I'm going to look at. Heavy frame of resources. Lots of pollen. This is a beautiful frame. If you want to look at this in the light, I don't know if you can see the color variation but this whole frame is all pollen right in there there's some honey up here and some nectar scattered through but if the sun hits this the right way you can see all the various colors of pollen from the various pollen resources that they've gathered it's a wonderful frame very heavy solid frame okay all right let's recap and let's close this thing up we've got about five frames of bees with 50 percent coverage as I showed those to you and pulled them out, you saw that about five of the frames about 50% coverage. Do I need another box? No, I do not. I still have five more frames that don't have any coverage on them. Very little coverage. Um, this colony has a queen. We saw that. She's laying. We saw that. There's eggs. If you do an inspection and you cannot find your queen, which is very possible, don't always just look for the queen. Look for eggs. If you see eggs or larvae, then you have a laying queen. Queens lay an egg, three days, they turn into larva, they hatch, turn into larva, then go to pupa, and then they're capped, and they, uh, you know, they will they will emerge in, in approximately, uh, you know, I think it's 16 days, sorry, I probably have my numbers off, 21 days, um, 21 days for, um, for the, the worker bees, a little bit longer for the drone bees, and 16 days for the queen. Again, we've got five frames of bees, full good coverage, 50% coverage, that's what you want. Um, when this gets to about 80% full, where there's resource frames full on the outside with not a lot of bees on it, but there's a lot of resource, the middle four or five, six frames have solid amount of bee coverage on it, then I would put a, another box on top. And then you need to make a decision. Are you gonna make honey or are you gonna allow the brood nest to grow? If you put another box on top, I put another deep on it with deep frames and no queen excluder. That'll allow the brood nest to get bigger within the colony. It's a perfect time to do that if you want to do a split later, if you have a great laying queen, it's a good idea to do that. If you want to start to make honey and you're in a the, the point, the peak of a nectar flow, which we're just starting now, you put a queen excluder on and put a box with either drawn frames uh, of super uh, honey frames or just undrawn and let them build out with the comb. Just know that if it's not drawn frames, it's going to take longer for them to find a place to put the honey. So they have to build the comb out and then store the honey in there. So don't expect a colony that you just bought all the equipment for that's brand new with no drawn comb to produce honey that year. It's not going to do it. The, the key focus for that colony, for me, if I was a new beekeeper, is to get that colony to overwinter. When it comes out of spring, then put your honey super on, go right from there and continue to capture that full nectar flow. It's possible to get a late nectar flow, but your focus should be on the bees, not on the honey. So again, we have a lot of things going on here. I could have talked about a bunch of other things that I didn't talk about. The last thing that I'm going to do is try to reset everything to where they were. You want to move gently so you don't squish any bees. Make them mad. Pushing the frames together tight so that they have the proper bee space. Now, I have this lots of nectar resources. I think probably the only one that had eggs on it was this middle frame we saw right here. Okay? So, you know, you can take 
a frame that was from the outside since all the bees were kind of centered over there and call it something called checkerboarding. Checkerboarding is where you allow the bees to stop concentrating on one section and kind of get them to concentrate on more frames. It's just a way to encourage them to be more um, efficient. So then we're gonna slide that one over. Slide my queen frame that had the queen on it laying eggs over. We're gonna slide that over. And I'm gonna move this one as well. That one. And then we'll take this frame and slide it in, in here. If your frames don't fit, if you see that, you just need to slowly shift them over with your tool to give it more room. And I'll drop down in. Once you get all your frames back in the box, you're gonna tighten them up together so that there's proper B space between them. Just like that. Hit the four corners, centering up the frames in the box of 10. If for some reason this colony was declining and they were on, you had 50% coverage barely on two frames, there is no harm at pulling six of those frames out or pulling four of those frames out. Again, you want to mitigate the chance of pests coming in and moving into empty comb and, and really if you have old pollen in some of that empty comb or if they started to build resources and then started to decline, you don't want them to necessarily get pests in here to have to deal with. That'd be another pressure that they have on them. Remove the frames. Just because you have a 10 frame box doesn't mean you need 10 frames. If you have a good amount of bees like we have here, where they're covering more than 50% of the frames and 50% on the frame, then yeah, you want to make sure that you put 10 frames in that box because you want to give them the room to build out on. I don't need another box yet, but I do need 10 frames. Hope that makes sense. All right, so we've got this together. Let's go ahead and slide our I'm going to put this the other way this time with the upper entrance. And you notice what I'm doing with the lid. I'm not slamming it down. I slid it across the edges and turned it in an angle. This prevents you from having to, you know, you squish bees when you just drop the, 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 the boxes and the high bodies together. Okay. Let's close them off there. Let's get our syrup ready. This is a one-to-one -one ratio. I'm not gonna go into how to mix a one-to-one -one ratio in this video. There's videos that I have on my YouTube channel that explains it. Sugar water, granulated white with sugar water, and I literally put one drop of lemongrass oil in here. That just helps them to accept the, the feed a little bit better. The lids that I'm using are called the B-Bar lids. They're lids that a company makes online. You can get them at thebbar.com and I'll put a link in the description. I love them because they don't rust. <laughs> That's the relief why I, I use them. I take my bottle of syrup and I flip it upside down. Let it pressurize inside so it's not pouring out. Okay. Once you have that set that way, put it over your hole. Okay. some of these bees out of the back of here. Let's put our super back on. Okay, a couple bees left inside. I'm gonna try to get them out of here as much as possible. We'll put our lid back on so they don't catch any more bees inside. And we're done our inspection. That's how you inspect a package that took me longer than normal. I mean, I can inspect a hive pretty quick because I know what I'm looking for, but I did a lot of talking. But you'll see that the length of this video is what a new beekeeper should spend on a new colony, inspecting it and looking for it. Once you get used to what that colony is doing and you do your inspections, uh, I would recommend every seven to 14 days to be inspecting your colonies, making sure that you have good bee coverage is the key. You have a queen or you have eggs that mean you have a laying queen. Not, you're looking for queen cells, which is a whole other video that we'll talk about to prevent swarming, but that's what you're looking for in your package. Um, 
Hopefully you've got a lot out of this video. If you liked the video, if you have any additional questions, you can direct message me or put them in the comments below. But subscribe to the YouTube channel because we love making these videos for our audience, making sure that they see what we do with the bees and how we teach others about what we learn from the bees. My bees are different than your bees. You make sure you watch your bees and you learn from your bees. Don't let anybody tell you online that they are the expert in any of this. I had to learn just like you're learning. So make sure you take the time, watch your bees, learn from your bees, research, join a local bee club, uh, follow uh, various uh, resources online, but also use your own judgment, right? So not everything that everybody says is exactly right. You have to test it for yourself. So I hope you enjoyed this installment that we've presented here on how to inspect a bee colony after you get your, your package about a week later. I recommend checking back in on this hive every seven to 14 days again seven to ten days probably during swarm season so you don't miss that opportunity and you may build a swarm cell on you and naturally they want to swarm out uh, and we'll talk about that in another video but thanks for watching subscribe to the channel make sure you hit the alerts button so you can see when we make new uh, videos uh, appreciate everyone watching and supporting us uh, go to our website we have a lot of bohemia bee gear if you want to get either uh, some bee gear or some honey or some other goods that have uh, bohemia bee bees on it uh, support us um, as we support the bee colony and we support the bees. Thanks for watching uh, here at Bohemia Apiary where beekeeping is definitely more than a hobby. It's an obsession. Thanks for watching.